Hi, Cliff Brake from Beck Systems. I'd like to do a demo of Git PLM parts library. This part library is used is used with KiCad. It uses the database feature in KiCad to to uh, provide a library of parts to KiCad. The reason we do this is because we can easily create new parts without uh, with just a line in a table. You know, if we need a new resistor value, we add a new line into the table, boom, we're done. We don't need to mess with symbols, or we don't need to manually assign part numbers and values in a schematic. So this parts library is specified in CSV files. And the question might be, well, why don't you just put it directly in the database? Well, the reason is we can easily store and diff, and multiple people can edit CSV files because they're just text files in Git. And tools like GitHub and Gitia, they have nice renderings for CSV files. And you can also look at history. And let's see if we look at this diff. Well, this isn't as nice as Gitia, but in Gitia, it actually shows you the, the table entries that change. But anyway, you can you can easily review these changes, and if it was in a SQLite blob, you know, you couldn't review changes. If you use Postgres or MySQL, you'd require like a centralized network connection, so that's not distributed. So these are all the reasons why we store CSV files in Git, and then we use these to create a uh, SQLite database that KiCad uses. So to create the database, there's a some uh, shell, a shell script here with a few functions. <clears throat> so this basically just loops through the libraries, the CSV files, imports them into SQLite. So let's run that. So the dot is just a shortcut for source. So it's just two, two different ways to do the same thing. This populates our environments with several functions. So the create creates parts dot SQLite. Let's see. Yeah, so this, we just created this database. We can uh, look at this database. So notice there's a number of tables in the database that correspond to our CSV files. And we can browse these tables. And again, this should look very similar to our CSV files. Just it's the same data, but it's just in a database now. So probably should step back and talk about the organization a little bit. So we in Git PLM we suggest this part number format, category, incrementing number, variation. And there's several categories, about a dozen or so, and these are basically broad categories for different types of parts. Now, our philosophy with part numbers is that part numbers should be easy to manage and by humans. They're, they're designed for humans, not machines. If we, so they need to be short, easy to remember, recognize, and compare. So if we have a part, no, part number on a bomb and we go to our part stock in our lab or our, our factory, we want to be able to find that part and pull it without making a mistake. And if we have a 20-digit part number that maybe encodes everything possible in the part number, we can't easily compare that as a human. But if it's, you know, this phone no this uh, part number that's kind of on the scale of a phone number, you know, that's something we can easily compare. It's broken down into nice sections. And these dozen or so categories, humans can deal with this. You know, if we had 200 categories and we create a new part, it, it becomes a challenge to figure out what library to put it in or what category. But if we have a dozen or so, then it's, it's uh, reasonable. You know, it's pretty easy to figure out where things go. And these categories also give us some free organization. You know, if we organize our parts by category, then they're easy to find in the lab or the factory or, or wherever. So each of these categories corresponds to a CSV file in Git PLM. 
So you'll notice there's a ANA, a CAP, a CON, and so on, a CSV file. You know, these are one-to-one -one correspondence. So we've created our CSV files, we've imported them into a database, now we need to hook up KiCad. So that is specified with this DBL file. In this DBL file, we tell KiCad to look for a SQLite database in the current directory named parts.sqlite. And then each one of these sections describes um, how to map the, the fields in a table or columns in a table to fields in a symbol in KiCad. One, one nice thing about having separate CSV files for each part is the, um, the resistor can have you know, voltage and resistance and tolerance columns, and the capacitor CSV can have capacitance, voltage, and um, material. You know, different parts have different fields that are relevant, so this, this separation again allows us to customize things a bit. So let's fire up KiCad. Uh, three things you need to configure. You need to configure several paths. This just helps the parts in Git PLM library to, to know where to find things. We need to add the libraries, and I recommend adding them globally. So this is the database, and then all these G dash libraries are just symbol libraries that have custom symbols that aren't in the KiCad standard libraries. And the same with the footprint libraries. Again, there's a um, number of G dash libraries that have custom footprints that aren't in the KiCad standard. So now when we go into the schematic and we add a part, we'll notice that we have all these git plm. And I'll make one other note. We prefix uh, the gplm library with a pound sign, and this causes it to show up at the top of our symbol chooser. So we're going to be placing parts entirely from our library. And since we're that's going to be what we're doing mostly, we want that to show up at the top. And then we can just pull parts. Uh, if we place a part, and we look at it, the, um, the, the library link is, is um, you can't see it because my screen's too small, but anyway, the, the, uh, the library link is actually the, the internal part number, so that's what links up the, the library. And I guess, yeah, I guess it's shown right here actually. The uh, library is get PLM, and the name is ICS, and then the internal part number. So if we want to add a new part, um, let's go ahead and do that. So let's say we want to add a new resistor. So let's open up the resistor. Let's open it up in LibreOffice. And let's say we want to add like a 23.2K. And again, we might go to our E96 series for 1% resistors. Say we need a 23K, we find what's closest to it, 23.2K. Go back to our spreadsheet and we go down through here. Insert a row above. And let's copy this row. These are resistor codes, so we know that's 232 times with two decimal places. Um, you you kind of get to know these codes after a while. Okay, and we might want to double check this part just to make sure we got the right one. 
let's go to here. Yep, 23.2K, 1% that's what we wanted. Okay, so we have the CSV file changed. Next thing we need to do is regenerate the uh, database. So the database is regenerated. And let's add KiCad. And search for parts, 20.2K. Yep, there it is. So our new part is available for placement. Um, and if we come up here, we'll see that we just by default we display the resistance, power, and tolerance. And again, we can we can uh, which fields are displayed by default are configurable per table in the database. Again, that's nice. So that's, that's how Git PLM parts library works. It's um, pretty easy. One other note I'll say is when you add a new part to the database, you need to restart KiCad. And that, that's a little clunky, but they do that for speed. They don't want to, they want to cache the parts library so it's super fast. And KiCad starts up so fast that it's really not a big deal to shut it down and restart it every time you add a part. And as your part library grows, you know, eventually you'll be doing that less and less as time goes on. So anyway, we really like it. It's working great. So let us know if you have any feedback. Thanks.